Oh, what's up? Welcome back. In this episode, we're solving day three of the advent of code for 2023. This one is called gear ratios. And you and the elf, we got to a gondola lift and the gondola lift is going to take us up to some other station, but the gondola is broken down. There's some issue with it. And our input today is some engine schematic, and we need to figure out something about all of these numbers. Anytime I see these in the advent of code, I know we're probably going to be doing something with this grid, and that is the case here. We have some symbols like the star, the pound sign, the plus, the, the asterisk, money sign, and we've also got some numbers, four, five, six, seven. And what we wanna do is find out which numbers are adjacent to any symbol. So here we have a star, and next to the star, right below it is a five and a seven is diagonally adjacent to the star, and so that counts too. This 114, the one is not actually diagonally adjacent to the star, so that we would say that this number is not touching a symbol. So what we need to do is go through and find all of the numbers that are adjacent to or touching a symbol, and we're gonna add those up and return the number, and that is gonna be the sum of all the parts in the engine, and that's our, that's our answer for part one. So for this example input, we're looking for 4361. Let's just grab that example input, crack open our terminal here, drop that in and get to work. The way that I thought about solving this was to break up each of these input lines into rows, and then we can access characters in each row by index because we can index into a string. So if we have the string ABC, we can index into it at one and that gives us back B. We're gonna do that. Uh, using, yeah, so for data, actually we'll just call data rows this time. And what we want to do is say like rows.each with index do row. And that's going to give us the row index. Let's just call this X for now. And then we can say row for each character do Y. And the first thing that we wanna do is just find where all the symbols are. So we're just gonna keep them this like list of like where all the symbols are. So we'll just keep an array here and we'll say if the character, or maybe like next, if the character is the period and next, if the character is a, uh, a digit and then otherwise we're gonna pop that into the symbols here and we don't actually need the raw character. So let's see if we can get all the locations for the symbols. So we run this and we got 0, 010, 0, 010, that looks wrong for sure. Maybe to help here, what we can do is print out the character. Um, yeah, let's print char and X and Y. Okay, so that is all of, uh, <laughs> This is symbols, but it's also uh, new line characters, which we don't care about. So before we even start messing around with rows, let's map and chomp those. And here we go. So now we're looking at symbol and then the location of the symbol. My thought process is let's just find the locations of all the symbols, and then we'll look at all of the adjacent spots around the symbol. And if there's a number in that spot, then we'll grow out in, we'll go, go to the left until we hit either a dot or the edge of the board. And that will let us give us like the starting point of each number. And we'll use the starting point to figure out what the number is. <clears throat> okay. So now that we have each symbol, we can say sims.each do X and Y. And uh, for each of those, what we want to do is we want to go in every single direction. We need to go back one and up one. We need to go up one, forward one and up one. The way I typically do this on most of these grid problems is I'll make a list of negative one and then negative one, zero, negative one, one, zero, negative one. Yeah, this list will generally let you iterate over a DX and DY so that you can find all of the neighbors around this thing. And if we find a number, we're gonna say that we like uh, potentially have a, a number location or something like that. So maybe we say like number locations. And here we'll say if rows at uh, NX 
and y is a digit, then we'll add that to our number locations. So we want to actually add nx and y. And then at the end here, we'll just p number locations and see what we get. Okay, so we're seeing 0, 2, 2, 2. So 0, 2 would be 0, 1, 2. So that's 7. That's right. And then 2, 2. So 0, 1, 2, 0, 1, 2. That's this 3. That is correctly adjacent. 2, 3. 3, 5 is also adjacent. 2, 6. 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Okay, so I think we are correctly finding the locations of numbers that are adjacent. And we, I, yeah, so let's like, just to verify, we should not have zero, one, two, three, four, five. Zero, five should not be in this list. And it looks like it is not there because that would mean that we are including 114, which is not adjacent to a symbol. All right. So now for each number location, we need to figure out what the whole number is. And when I was going through this, I, my thought was like, it, it doesn't matter where we landed in the number. If we just keep going to the left inside of that row until we either fall off the board or hit a dot, then we can find the index, the Y value for the first, or I guess it's X, I don't know, whatever, like the index in the row for the first digit in each of these numbers. And then we can use that to figure out what the number is. What we want to do is for each of these number locations, we want to say maybe like number starts, like starting points for the numbers. And we can say, what we want to do is while rows of X and Y minus one is a digit, decrement Y. And then at the end, number starts is going to be X, Y. So this should give us Doing this y minus equals 1 should let us shift over to the left until we get back to the beginning of any number. So now if we print out number starts, we should see, okay, so 0, 0, 2, 2, and 2, 2. Ah, we've got two of the same starts in here. So that actually makes sense, right? So 0, 0, that's correctly this one, 4. And then we have... 2, 2, which is 3, and we have that twice. That's because both 3 and 5 are adjacent to this star. And so maybe one thing we could do is just make number starts set so that it's unique, set.new. And in order to do that, we have to require set. Set is a collection similar to an array, but it, it will only allow unique elements. So if we run this again, now we have the set of 0, 0, 2, 2, 2, 6, 4, 0, and so on. Also, to make it a little easier, I'm going to print the input so that we can see it while we're debugging here. Okay. So 0, 0, 2, 2, 2, 6, 4, 0. Good. 6, 2. Okay. So that is looking really good. So now we've got the locations of the number starts. And in Ruby, we can use indexing again into each of those rows based on the number start. And then we can just convert it to integer because technically in Ruby, if you have one, two, three, and then some words, which we will in the form of dots, right? If you convert this to I, you get one, two, three, because the string starts with a digit that can be converted into an integer. And so we can take advantage of this nicety of Ruby. and if it starts with some dots, what we can do is then just index into this from 0, 1, 2, 3 with an infinite range. So this will grab like from 3 to the end of the string, and then we can convert that to an integer. So it's grab all these, convert it to an integer. And then if we need to get another number, then we'll say grab all of this and convert it to an integer, It's and so on. So we'll say number starts that each do x, y, and then we can say rows at x, y, up to the end, dot two i. And I think this should maybe give us some, uh, some numbers we can play with. So let's say, let's just p result and see what we get. All right, so 467, 35, 633, 617. Those are all the numbers that we're seeing up here that are adjacent to symbols. That's fantastic. 
Now, in order to get our answer here, we need to find the sum of all of those parts. So we're just gonna call dot sum and run it. And we get 4361. 4361 is what we were looking for. So now we wanna try it against our puzzle input. So we'll grab our puzzle input here and we'll drop it at the bottom. And it looks like I've got an extra line there. And then we can switch from, from our example input to our data that's at the bottom of the file. We run this and we get 527369. Okay, boom, that's part one. That is our answer for part one. All right, so for part two, all right, let's look at the, the question for part two. So the engineer finds that the, there's a missing part. They install it, blah, blah, blah. We fix part one. For part two, we're talking about gear ratios. So the problem is going to shift here. And a gear is any star symbol that's adjacent to exactly two part numbers. So we need to look for star symbols that have two numbers connected to them. So right here, 467 is connected to 35 with a star symbol. So they only, and this, this symbol only has two numbers adjacent to it, right? It doesn't have one, it doesn't have three. Here's another star symbol that has exactly two numbers adjacent to it. So this is what we're looking for now. We're looking for only the star symbols that have two numbers adjacent. And then that's gonna give us a gear ratio. And in the schematic, a gear ratio is the two numbers that are adjacent to the star multiplied together. So what we need to do is figure out 467 times 35, and that gives us the gear ratio for this top left group. And then we're going to add that to the gear ratio for the bottom pair of numbers that's adjacent to a star. All right, so the problem shifts a little bit, right? Instead of looking for all the symbols, what I want to do now is just make it look for the star symbols. And now we have to figure out how we're going to exclude the cases where we only have one number next to us. Right. In when I was doing this, I actually copied the entire thing because I didn't want to mess up the solution for the first one. So here, as we're going through and finding all the symbols, what we want to do now is just add the symbol if the character is the star and the rest of this doesn't actually matter. I don't think. OK, if we do this, though, whoops, let's run against our example input. All right. If we run against the example input, now we get zero, zero, two, two. That's correct. But we also get this four zero. So zero, one, two, three, four, four zero. So we're seeing six one seven. Six one seven should not be included in our solution because this asterisk only has one number adjacent to it. So what we need to do is figure out how we can only include numbers that have, or like number starts when the symbol has two numbers adjacent to it. So rather than iterating over the symbols and collecting the number locations and then separately figuring out the starts and then separately like converting those uh, into integers, what I think we want to do is for each symbol, we need to action each symbol, right? We can't do these all in separate steps anymore because each symbol, now we need to know like how many adjacent numbers are there. What we can do is move like most of this content inside of the block for each symbol. So now, as soon as we know the number locations for a given symbol, we can iterate over that subset. And I think, yeah, I think we might even want to create number locations inside of here. So we're going to iterate over some set of number locations for a given symbol. And when we encounter each one, we're going to go back and find a number start. And then if number starts dot length is equal to two, then we will figure out what the number is, map it to integer, inject to create the product, and then we'll P the result. And let's just see what we get here. Okay. So now we're getting 451490. 451490. Okay, that gives us the second gear ratio. And 16345, 16345 is the first gear ratio. So those are the two gear ratios that we want to add up. So we're given back these gear ratios. Okay. And 
yeah, so maybe we can keep track of some like sum and we'll set that equal to zero and we'll do like sum plus equals result and then we'll just p sum at the end here. And now we're getting four, six, seven, eight, three, five, four, th six, seven, eight, three, five. So that is that is the answer against the example input. So now let's run it against the real input here. Seven three zero seven four eight eight six seven three zero seven four eight eight six. Boom! That is the answer for part two. All right, that was actually not that bad. We've got a bit of a mess here. Just like print, stop printing out the number starts, and then yeah, like anytime I do this sort of thing, I don't know. Yeah, there's probably better ways to iterate over the adjacent neighbors and figure out what their number locations are, but this seems to work fine for now. Also, these number starts, now that we're inside of, yeah, even though we're inside of here, we still need these number starts because we might end up um, with multiple number locations that are going to, that we need to count back from. Technically, we could have moved a bunch of this stuff into here. Here, let's actually, let's try this. So let's say that number starts is also up here. Okay. All right. It's still working. Okay. So now what we want to do is try to try to iterate here. So while rows at NX and NY minus equals one, NX or N, NY is equal to NY. N N Y N N Y minus equals one. And then we do like number starts as N N X minus N N Y. Does this work? Okay, nice. All right. <clears throat> With this solution, we are able to iterate over the number locations and pull out the number starts, like the unique number starts while we're iterating through the neighbors. So this is a little bit better. And yeah, so if the length is two, cool. So this is probably as concise as I would want to go. Uh, and yeah, I'm pretty happy with this solution. All right, that's it. Thanks a ton for watching. We'll see you in the next one.